What's up folks, how's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, I'm going to show you on how to install Mac OS X El Capitan onto your PC-based hardware using an Intel-based processor. So here we're going to be specifically focusing on the installation process from a start to end finish. So from a blank standpoint. Now obviously there's an upgrade path from going to uh, an older generation OS X to a 10.11. And there's a couple of different guides online for that. But in this installation guide, we're going to be specifically going through the steps and how to install Mac OS 10 10.11 from a computer that has nothing on it so from a clean sheet of piece of paper and it's great for anybody that's new to the world of Hackintosh and it's pretty simple and straightforward just follow my steps and let's get right into it now here you're going to need three essential items to get everything up and running. Firstly, you're going to need a pre-existing computer that's built around an Intel-based uh, CPU. Now you can use AMD-based systems to run a Mac OS X, but it's a little bit trickier. This specific guide is for Intel processors, and essentially you want to select parts that have been proven to work with Mac OS X. If you check out in the description down below, you'll find three different PCs at three different price ranges. So there's basically a computer for anybody that wants to create one from scratch and we have a couple of different build guides on the channel to help you uh, create your custom built PC but you'll find all those uh, links in the description and down below additionally you're also going to need a, a USB a thumb drive so this is ideally going to be 8 gigabytes or larger 16 gigabytes is probably the best bet since uh, these OS's are getting bigger and bigger every year and you're also going to need a, a computer that's running Mac OS 10 10.6 or newer this could be a legitimate Macintosh computer or it could be an existing Hackintosh uh, just go out and borrow a computer from your friend. We only need the OS 10 machine for just a few moments in order to legitimately download 10.11 from the Mac App Store and again you're also going to need an Apple ID but everything is free in terms of downloading the full operating system which is quite awesome. Now the first thing you want to do is download a legitimate version of a Mac OS 10 El Capitan from the Mac App Store. Now the good thing is it's absolutely free all you're going to need is brief access to a computer that's already running Mac OS 10 10.6.8 or newer. So this could be a MacBook Air that I'm using right over here or a Hackintosh or a computer that you've borrowed from a friend. Now El Capitan is going to take a little bit of time to download but while it's downloading we can take this time to download some of the essential files you're going to need in order to do this installation. Now the first thing you want to do is go to uh, TonyMaxX86.com. This is an excellent resource. Uh, everything is based off of this resource and they have an excellent community. Big props to them for making this tutorial possible. So once you're here, you want to make sure that you have an account in order to download some of the essential files. And uh, the first thing we want to download is a copy of the latest version of Unibeast. This is a utility that's going to essentially create our bootable USB drive. Furthermore, you're also going to need to download El Capitan post installation tools as well as the Clover configurator tool. And again, all the uh, download links will be in the description down below. Once you have all that stuff downloaded, we're going to configure our USB thumb drive. Now we're going to insert the drive into our computer and we're going to open up disk utilities. We're going to highlight the actual USB thumb drive on the left hand column and we're just going to hit the erase button. We're going to make sure that we're formatting in Mac OS X extended journal and we're just going to name this drive USB in all capitals. Once you've done all that, go ahead and hit apply and then it'll start partitioning our USB drive. Okay, so now since we have our USB drive fully configured, configured and we have Mac OS 10 El Capitan fully downloaded from the App Store. We can now get the ball rolling and finally open up Unibeast and we're going to hit continue a couple of times until we get into our destination select. We're going to of course select our USB that we freshly partitioned, hit continue and we're going to select our current OS that we're going to install and obviously that's going to be El Capitan. Hit continue to go forward. At this junction when we get to the bootloader options we're going to choose UEFI boot mode which is based on our specific hardware that we're going to be installing OS 10 on and then hit continue here we can configure our graphics so we're using an Nvidia based graphics card so we're going to select that option and hit continue and uh, here is just a summary of everything we've selected now once you move forward beyond this point it's going to start configuring everything it's going to install El Capitan onto the USB thumb drive and it should be ready to boot up once everything is completed and once Unibeast is done doing its thing we're going to go ahead and just drag and drop some of the files that we downloaded earlier for 
for our post installation process. So once you have everything copied over, we're just going to eject this uh, drive out of the computer and we're going to take the USB thumb drive and directly insert the USB thumb drive into a USB 2 port, not a USB 3.0 port into our Hackintosh that we're going to be installing Mac OS 10 onto. Now I'm going to turn on my computer and uh, hold down a delete to get into the BIOS. And I just want to make sure that we load the optimized defaults for this motherboard by pressing F7. And I'm going to make sure that my boot mode is set to AHCI, not RAID or ID. And we're just going to hit uh, F10 to save that. And we're going to restart our computer. And now you want to mash either F8 or F12 to get into the boot device selection menu. And we're going to select our USB uh, drive that we configured. And we're going to load up into the Mac OS 10 bootloader. And uh, you can either go ahead and press enter. Now, if you can't get to the installer page for whatever reason, you can try some boot flags by pressing in the uh, space bar two times and perhaps going into safe mode or some of the other modes if you have any troubles getting into the installer. For me, fortunately, I didn't really have any hiccups uh, getting to the OS 10 installer. But once you get to the installer page over here, you want to choose uh, your preferred language. Then you want to go to the top bar menu, hit utilities and then disk utilities and then highlight the drive that we're going to install El Capitan on on the left hand side. And we're just going to hit the erase button and we're going to name uh, the uh, drive El Capitan uh, just like that. And we're going to format in Mac OS 10 extended journal. And uh, for the scheme, we're going to choose uh, GUID partition map. And then we're going to hit erase again. Once all that is done, you can go ahead and close disk utilities and proceed through the installer to install Mac OS 10 El Capitan. And this is going to take a little bit of time. But once the installation is complete, it's going to automatically restart your computer. You're going to uh, mash either F8 or F12 to get into the boot device selection menu. And we're going to boot back into the USB thumb drive. And then we now have the option to boot directly into the main Mac OS 10 OS. Just like every other new Macintosh that you get, you're going to go through the initial setup for your password and everything like that. So you can go through all those steps. But once you get to the desktop, we're now ready to do all the post installation stuff to finalize our setup. But now at this point, we want to go ahead and open up our USB drive in the finder. And we're going to drag and drop our uh, post installation files as well as the Clover configurator tool onto our desktop. So we have that readily available. But just before we start installing anything, we're going to go to system preferences, go to security security options and we're going to allow us to download from anywhere so we're just going to unlock this and uh, make sure that there's no restrictions in terms of uh, loading any of our applications and once you have that done we're going to go back into the desktop and we're going to go into the uh, folder marked El Capitan post installation tools here you want to go ahead and open up the UEFI boot mode this is going to start installing the Clover installer bootloader onto our PC once that is completed you want to go ahead and install custom Mac essential this is going to configure stuff like uh, our Ethernet support as well as fake SMC. And when that's done doing its thing, we're going to go to the top finder menu and we're going to click on preferences. We're going to select the option to show all of our hard drives. And now you can see the EFI partition on our desktop. So we're going to go right in there, uh, click through the folder and we're going to click on the Clover folder. And uh, you'll see a file called config.plist. And we're going to double click on that file and it's going to open up our Clover configurator tool. Now at this point, you want to go to the tab that says SM BIOS and here we're going to define the definition for our system and we're going to click on the magic wand icon and we're just going to select a Mac Pro 3.1 as a basic configuration over here. Furthermore, we're going to go to the graphics UI tab and we're going to select inject NVIDIA since we're using NVIDIA based graphics card. This is basically saying graphics enabler equals yes. And uh, once all that is done, we're going to save this and close the Clover configurator tool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just re start our computer we're going to take out our USB thumb drive and we want to make sure that now we are booting directly from the drive itself so we have our bootloaders correctly installed and as you can see we do so we can uh, directly load up Mac OS 10 again now here we're back at the desktop looks like everything worked fine in terms of the bootloader but we don't really have access to the internet so that means the custom Mac didn't really do its thing in terms of installing the Ethernet support and we don't have any audio so in order to alleviate those issues there's a couple of different options 
options out there on the web. So go check out different forms for your particular hardware. But what kind of worked for me is I used an older version of a Multibeast. Right now they're working on Multibeast 8.0, which will work with El Capitan. But I basically used a 7.5 and uh, basically loaded up the audio and networking drivers that I know work for this piece of hardware because that's what I was using before. So I basically loaded that up and uh, the computer restarted and I got audio and I got the internet to work as you can see over here. So now I definitely have to say that this is probably not the best solution. Once a Multibeast 8.0 comes out, we'll have better native support for drivers uh, for El Capitan. But this particular solution of using an older version of Multibeast kind of worked for me at this point uh, based on my Gigabyte motherboard. But really on that guys, that's really it. Now uh, in terms of the post installation process, it's always tricky. That's probably one of the hardest parts of installing OS 10, and it is a really a lot of variables based on your specific hardware that you're running. Now, in my case, I had to actually run an older version of Multibeast to get my audio and my networking to work. Everything else is kind of working fine in terms of what I use my OS 10 Hackintosh machine for. But uh, generally speaking, there will be Multibeast 8.0 coming out very, very soon. And perhaps uh, when this video comes out, it'll already be out. But right now, I'm pretty happy with uh, the setup right now and uh, things will only get better in terms of support uh, later down the road. But again, if you have any questions at all, uh, there's tons of resources online. TonyMaxX86.com is uh, pretty much the go-to place. Without them, uh, all this stuff wouldn't be possible. So big shout out to them. Go support them. And I really like to thank them so much for making all this stuff so simple. It takes a lot of energy and effort to make all these things as simple as uh, I make it to be on these videos. So uh, thank you again for all your guys' support uh, throughout the years on all these Hackintosh related videos. But also let me know if you guys want me to do a dual boot video, if you guys want to install Mac OS 10 El Capitan alongside Windows 10 for a dual boot configuration on one hard drive. We already had a very similar video last year uh, about uh, installing Yosemite in Windows 10. So definitely check out that video. It's pretty much going to be the same process, but I'll just update it if you guys want. So definitely let me know. But really, other than that, thank you again for watching. We'll see you later. Take care.